Melvin. Now the 22-year-old traveling songbird lives in New York and has just released her debut single, Bulletproof Belief, from her debut album, Figure Eight. I caught up with Julia during her brief trip to Australia and asked how she was feeling about her new life in the Big Apple. Bulletproof Belief is the first single from New Zealand songbird Julia Darling's debut album, Figure Eight. So how did a Kiwi end up in the Big Apple? Some interest came about um, from Wind Up Records, a company based in New York. And they said, well, we'll back you and we'll support you financially. Come and live in, in the city so you can be closer to what's going on over there. And, you know, who can refuse that? Can't buy a potion and I've never seen a light. You won't protect me walking home that night. But New York is a hard nut to crack and Julia's found she's had to toughen up. You turn into a, a, a meaner person living in New York, so it's hard to step back and say, just relax. Yeah. A meaner person? You do, you know, because everything's fast and it's all for yourself and it's very competitive and everyone's wanting to make more money than you do or, you know, so it's, it's kind of fewer morals over there. Praise for Julia's songwriting ability has come from far and wide. She's even been touted as the best songwriter to come out of New Zealand since Neil Finn. I mean, to, to be in the same sentence as any Finn brother is a huge compliment. That's a good song. It's called Bulletproof Belief, and it comes from her debut album, Figure Eight. And we'll have more of Julia later in the show. Bulletproof belief. We'll yeah. see you tomorrow. We should wish the, the boss happy birthday. Yes, happy happy birthday, birthday, Lindell. Lindell. See you tomorrow. and she's on the Sean Mullins tour and she's uh, doing great things, writes great songs. Uh, the album's out on Monday. Um, the album, which is Figure Eight, is out on Monday. And this is the single Bulletproof Belief, Julia Darling and Band. <laughs>
Julia. Fabulous. She's uh, touring at the moment too with uh, with uh, Sean Mullins, as I. Who's actually on the show next week? Of course, along with and recording in LA. She's come to visit with her band, with whom she's been touring Australia for the last week and a half. The 10:30 slot would like to welcome her back as she performs the first single from her extremely excellent new record, Figure Eight. Julia Darling and her band with Bulletproof Belief. <laughs> It's Julia Darling and the wonderful band. That was the first single from Figure Eight called Bulletproof Belief. While you make your way over here for a little yarn, I'll run through your date. And Angus perhaps can provide some mood music. Just for, just for the dates? Yes. Okay. Thank you, not for the interview. Julia Darling... Go. Julia Darling will be playing Saturday the 11th of September at the Esplanade Hotel Front Bar in St Kilda. That is all. Thanks, Angus, and thank you, Julia. Thank Very you. wonderful to have you here. Yes!
Welcome, welcome, welcome back Thanks. in Australia after a couple of years in the US of A. Yep. You tell us about what you've been doing in America. Um, well, I made figure eight. Yes. And that took, um, that took about a year. Right, okay. And then this year we've been um, touring in the States and we released it in Canada and the US and now Australia and New Zealand. Good heavens above. And living there as well? Living in Brooklyn. Have you got your breath? Sorry. Yeah, I'm all right. Very, very professional of you. And living in Brooklyn, New York. Yep. Very fun and fast and very busy. Fast and busy, yep. Mm. Now, you left Australia at a time when your um, career was just starting to become big and, and everyone was starting to know you and then you went away. Why was it important to go to America for you? Um, well, we sent demo tapes around the States and Australia and we wanted to get a, a record deal and um, wind up in, in New York, put their hands up. And so, you know, we went to where the deal was. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, okay, good, good. And have you been, you've been playing much there and touring? Yeah, we've been all around the States. Yeah. What's it like? Are you getting a, a big following there? Pretty good, there? actually, yeah. The first, the first dates we started, there were, you know, empty halls for a while and you just keep going back and keep playing and over and over again and you slowly watch a fan base build. Ooh, it's really cool. It works. Yeah, yeah, it does work. Have you tried busking there yet? No, I haven't. You can only busk in the, in the subways. Oh, really? Yep, you're not allowed to busk on the streets. Oh. So, um, I, I'm not into busking in the subways. Finished that? Yeah. Uh, busking at all? I was going to have a busk the other day yeah. in St Kilda, Aww. but I didn't get around to it. And yeah, it's a bit of jewellery roots there. Julia. tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go out and find her, everyone, if you want to go and chuck some 20 cents in. Julia was doing $2, a, actually. $2, I mean, a bit of busking in Melbourne whilst uh, training as a dancer, viewers, and was consequently filmed by a tele show and signed. Yes, yes. Now, the album Figure 8 is nice and rich. The songs are free and complex, and they don't always go where you'd expect them to go. Um, did you have your ideas for this album before you started recording, or was it happening I, as you were making yeah, it? Yeah, I didn't really have your first album. I didn't know what I was going to do, so mm. um, it just sort of developed over the time, and I had really great producer and engineer and musicians and stuff so it was a, a joint effort the whole way through you've got some old songs on there as well so uh, three four years old yeah, yeah for sure i guess you've almost been writing this album your whole musical That's career right. life in a way um, um 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 they're different now though the older songs we just we just heard bulletproof belief if you remember the old bulletproof belief it was a lot slower less pacey yep why the change of pace um well because we discovered the rest of the album was becoming quite you know um rich and full and we needed an upbeat song and this one you know fit perfectly Indeed. plus i rewrote it which you know yeah i know do you know i that? know that yeah Did yeah you know that you yeah. noticed that That's yeah good good the album is full of amazing sounding instruments too like the marxophone um a sitar bandura bagpipes lovely accordion on there and a chamberlain what's a marxophone marxophone is like a little sit down harp Mm. And it has lots of strings on it and um, little hammers. Oh, that's that Japanese-y bung sound yeah, soft? Yeah, it sort of almost. sounds like that, little pings. Ah, right. And you play it. Like, Listen, yeah. find out. Um, if you see the film clip for Bulletproof Belief, you'll actually see Julia driving around on the top of a cab. Is that right? Yeah. In New York? Mm -hmm. Is that normal there? No, it's not, but, you know, of course it's not. Oh. But we got this old cab and, and I got strapped in there, strapped on top of Were it. Were you causing a scene in New York? Yep, there was um, a big double-decker yellow tour bus <laughs> with lots of tourists taking my photo behind following us around the following city. you yep very good and normal good are you very planning normal, yeah. more writing and recording soon um yeah i'm writing the next album and yes. uh you know when we finish doing the promo for this i'll start thinking about recording very good yeah in america or here are you going to come back or stay probably in the states yeah but we want to come back here and play more shows and you and know bask in st kilda yes of course um very good any plans for your new year's party yet julia um i think i'm going to the beach somewhere oh yeah. new zealand no. No, because everyone will be there, won't they? They will. Good luck to you, and thank you very much for joining us tonight on the 10.30 slot. Miss Julia, darling. <laughs> Angus, farewell. Angus, if you'd like to. Well, who's coming up on the show?
you know? The live thing out there at the Mercury Lounge. Yep. What a mad gig. I know. You, you looked as though, uh, you, you, know, you really looked as though you were really enjoying yourself and having a lot of fun. Yeah, it was good to be, you know, back in Melbourne and, and the room was crowded. And... Well, it's got to fill you in here, guys. New Zealand is the, uh, the home uh, country and the hometown is New Plymouth. If I uh, can, can say that correctly. Now, this is a little town on the, uh, in the North Island, on the, on the West Coast, if I've done my research correctly. Are you a bit of a surfy girl there? I was, yeah. yeah? Surfing, skateboarding. You, uh, you, you would have got out there and just, because it's a good swell, I understand, oh, yeah, in New Plymouth. Yeah. How did you drag yourself away from that? It's a lovely part of the world. Well, you know, I, I finished school and, and it, was, it was just a little homey, you know, I just, mm. I couldn't, whoa, I just had to get away. I see. Yeah, you because know, I, I wasn't going to go to university. So I wanted to travel and move to Melbourne to study dance. Entertaining us all. I got to talk about the fact that uh, the dance thing didn't really, uh, didn't really last you. You were a finely tuned human specimen, and you chose to go for the glamorous life of busking. That's right. <laughs> no, it's just kind of a little stifled that the dance thing didn't work. I studied for a year, and um, I just wasn't, being, I wasn't creative enough. Mm. You know, I was in a class of students, and I'd been in classrooms since I was five years old, and I was just like, I've just got to get out of this environment. So I bought a guitar and started writing songs and didn't have a job or parental support anymore so mm. I had to make it on my own and that meant playing the songs on the street for coins. The writing process for you, uh, from what I understand, is a fairly sort of cathartic thing. I mean, you've done it as far as just uh, expressing things and dealing with things on a personal level. Mm -hmm. uh, it just happens to uh, be of a great deal of interest to uh, listeners. Oh, yeah, I know. And uh, I never really got into writing to, to be playing the songs to other people mm. and I started writing my songs just for myself mm. and that's why they're like completely honest and kind of open and often soul bearing and people are digging that so it's yeah. like oh god I have to keep doing that now don't I? Bonus yeah if I'm just going to do a bit of uh, you know searching uh, rip of my heart out yeah. every couple well, of years. Well that's tough but you know I've paid the bills it's uh, kind of good doing yeah. it. Well when was the last time you got home? Home, home, which home? Home, home, you put the home. Um, this time last year. Oh, okay. What are you, well, you're, you're very close. Sure, you're going home, home in a couple of days, too. Oh, yeah, okay. For three days. So, apart from seeing your brother, you wouldn't have seen your folks, right? No, it's been a year. You're going to go for surfing again, then? No. Come on. No, I don't surf anymore. Oh, really? That's it? Yep. There you go. That's in the contract. I'm too scared. Don't go hurting yourself. Too valuable. You can't duck dive yet, either. Oh, okay. You can only work on it. Well, look, next time you've got a bit more time in Melbourne, we're going to Bells. And uh, oh. we're, we're going there and. Oh. Uh, I'll teach you to duck dive and it'll be going on. Thanks. Cool. Julia Darling, thanks for joining us on Ground Zero. Thank you.
Um, a little bit of time in LA and most of it in New York. Why, why New York over LA? Be the cities don't compare for a start. Really? New York is by far the superior city. Oh, there's no yeah. one from LA watching tonight. I don't care if there are. <laughs> What's so bad about LA? Well, LA is just, just tough because it's spread out. It's not really a city. There, it's not like um, people living together in, in one big area. You yeah. know, it's all spread out and different groups and you've got the rich part there and the poor part there and everything's segregated. And people don't get along that well, whereas no, in New don't. York it's, they... everyone's crushed and yeah. you kind of have to get along. And that's the good thing about it, is that if, you, know, you just get on with life and it's cool. Does it make you tougher living yeah, in New York? Have it you does. kind of become a bit of a tough chick? Yep. Well, that's cool. We might get you actually a test our. Oh, a bit of a bitch? Yep. Oh, well, maybe you could call through and nominate Julia Darling as, as the biggest bitch on TV because <laughs> she's on TV right now. We might even get you to test your toughness on the Slam Man there just behind you. He's just come in today from okay. the Innovations Catalogue and he's got gloves. So you can. Yeah, Great. Which is good. You need that. You haven't that. named him yet, though. No. What should well, we call you him? Name him. Don? <laughs> Kevin? Sorry. Kevin. Dennis. Kevin on. Oh, 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 oh no. The oh. <laughs> I didn't mean it. This is his oh. name, Don. Yeah. Oh. He's actually the star of the Come show. Back, Don. Um, now, before you came out here, you were actually doing lots of in stores, is that right? In bookshops. That's oh, what I hear. I've been hear. promoting my record. Brilliant. And so you, get, you play your live shows and then you do your little solo acoustic promotions as well. And that, that's like in store record shops and bookstores and wherever you know you can play, you play. Have you come across any crazed fans yet? I do have a creepy fan. Oh. I d but he might be, he'll probably see this one day. No, nah, no one's got cable. But that's no all right. It's, no, no um, everyone's got cable. Actually, he did. He's not a creepy fan. He's a, just a big fan. But he made a, a T-shirt for me. Actually, that, a T-shirt that says Julia Darling rocking the USA or something like something rock and roll like that. Right. Um, and yeah, he wears it to my shows. Wow, so you've well, met like him? the t-shirt you made when you were a kid and, and you got the fuzzy letters and stuck them on. I love them, they're the you best know those shirts. Ones? So you've met him? Yeah, I and mean, he's at every gig. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's is. great. That's good. Wow, he didn't kind of hang out when you were busking in uh, St Kilda? No, he didn't. He, he's an American fellow. Oh, okay. Oh, crazy planners. Are you kind of looking to, to spend a lot of time in the States? You're living yeah. in New York at the yeah. moment. Um, as long as I have to be there and, and, you know, have to be near my company, yeah. Uh -huh. That's cool, because the band are obviously from the States. Are they from New York? Yep. That's cool. And they, are they the same guys that appear on your debut album? Actually, they're different Figure guys. Eight? Oh, here we go. That's right. So. Oh, there's no lights. Oh, you hold it. You're good. Well done. My band now are different from the guys who played on the record. They're different. I, I didn't actually know my band until I moved to New York after I made that record. Uh -huh. So. Is that hard? Teaching a whole bunch of people songs? And no, because then... they're professionals. Oh. <laughs> Well, I mean, they look pretty slick. No, they're cool. They're, they're excellent. And my older brother's the guitarist, so... Really? Yeah. So he knew the songs already. Oh, wow. His name's John. John. Oh, you just beat me to it. Um, maybe we could take uh, just a, a sneak peek as we keep talking at, at your clip for your, your debut single, even though you did have an EP out a while ago. But look, we're focusing on the first single from the album, um, Bulletproof Belief. Is that inspired by... Is that a kind of gun song? Is it inspired by life in New York? No, it's actually, um, it's just about, you know, having strength and independence and believing in yourself and, and not having to rely on your parents or rely on religion or rely on, you know, whoever else people, you know, go to when they're in trouble. So it's about getting, getting your uh, stuff together and doing it yourself. That's cool. There's some hairy moments where you're like riding around on the top of a cab. Is that, looks quite dangerous. Yeah, Quite well, no, fast we, too. We, we did it slow motion and then sped it up, of course. Oh, so that makes it fine to just drive around on top of a cab as long as it's slow. Well, I was harnessed in. You were harnessed in? Totally, yeah. Oh, we wow. had a safety guy at the video and he he was, you know, crazy, basically. Yeah, we can put her on yeah. the roof of the oh. cab, we can do anything. Yeah, that's what he was like. Wow. We were, we were just speaking to Jill Cunniff from um, Luscious Jackson the other night. She lived in New York and she said that it's just, a, you know, everyone kind of knows each other there, or the musos and stuff. Have you found that? Have you met lots of, lots of the bands and the musos that live there? Um, no, I haven't. But... I mean, you're obviously very busy. I mean, well, they sound like they just kind of hang around in can, coffee shops all day. I know what she means is in, once you establish yourself in a little community there, it's like everyone sticks together and helps each other out. So... Even though it's a, you know there are eight million people there every day, it's still a small world. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't bumped into Kiss or Public Enemy or. No, I haven't. No. No. Well, Although Mike Tyson, 
Speaking of boxing, yeah. the train's opposite my apartment. Oh, would, would, that's the perfect way to lead us okay. Would you like to don the gloves and have a punch at Kevin? Now, I heard that Kevin bounces back. So yeah, Darren, course. could you... You're good. You, you, you're so much more together than I am. Would you like to host the show from now on? Yes, please. Excellent. Great. Um, now, Julia Darling's debut album, Figure 8, is released this coming Monday. Uh, and the single is out already, and you can actually find it on the net at www.juliadarling.com.com, rather, which I've got here with a funky picture and all kinds of info and stuff. And right, oh, right now, oh, this is great. I'm just kind of, <sighs> so we haven't tried this before. It's a new kind of hey, bit. Do you that want we're a trying. glove? Oh no, you'll probably kill him before I will. Okay, I've just got to see how far, how how hard I can bounce them. And the dates, the dates. You can catch Julia and the band at Bar Broadway this Friday. Start punching. Start punching. Oh, okay. You're like... on. Kill him. Just kill him. <laughs> kill him. Harder. <laughs> kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Oh, slam man uh, taking stomach. a beating. <laughs> slam man. <laughs> hey, easy. We, hey, hey, hey. Oh, we just okay. got him. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh hey, hey. Oh, damn. Don. Oh. No, it's Kevin. It's Kevin. Kevin. It's not Don at all. Um, and then uh, at the Esplanade next Friday, and more from Julia very soon on the show. Right now, have you met Kid Rock? We're about to play no, his I haven't met Kid Rock. Know. Looks a little bit obnoxious, but sometimes obnoxious is good, I find. Um, and this is a big tribute. Keep hitting, keep hitting. To, to Smokey and the Bandit and the Dukes of Hazzard with even Boss Hogg making an appearance. Here's Kid Rock and Cowboy. Um, this is a song of mine. It's called You.
Okay, so now we're going to play Bulletproof Belief, which is um, the first single of my record, Figure Eight. Just a girl. 